Hello, welcome to the weather update. It's 10 o'clock. January 11th, and it was another gloomy day. Looking at the weather map, you see lots of systems that are moving toward us. That means rain chances in the forecast. Looking at the radar, you can see this is a warm front that is over here, right here. And you can sort of see the low pressure and a cold front sort of right over here. Um, looking at our current conditions outside right now, it's, you know, it's cool. We got mid-30s, it's been, you know, plenty of clouds around today, pretty much. Uh, looking at Islip right now. That's what it's like at Islip right now. Light northeast to northeast, east to wind, northeast to east winds across the area. Let's look at our highs and lows for the day. And let's get those highs up there. So highs around normal, pretty close to normal. Um, and let's take a look at the lows. Um, and lows probably didn't get down that much again because we've had cloud cover, so not a big variation between the highs and the lows. So when you actually, when you fact that in, I think we'll be above normal section. Let me go look at the climatology for Islip uh, for today, just just because I bet it still was above normal. You want to make a bet? It was still above normal? Probably. Let's go to daily climate report. Nice slip. So let's see what we got here. Let's take the mean. Let's take a look at the mean. So the mean today was 37. The normal was 32. So we're actually five degrees above normal for today because of the, the of the warm nighttime temperatures. So still dealing with above normal conditions because it's not cooling off at night because of the cloud cover. And you can see looking at all that cloud cover right there, right here on the satellite. You can see plenty more of that. And moisture will be moving in tomorrow as we deal with some rain. So let's go take a look at the weather map and you'll see here the on the models, you'll see this uh, low pressure from the Great Lakes. You see that warm front there, that gives us a chance of showers in the morning. And then we have a better chance of showers with ahead of the cold front in the evening tomorrow night. And it should be out of here by Friday afternoon. So you can see there's that low moving offshore. Um, and then that high builds in, and we should give it, get some sunshine in here for Sunday. And you can see maybe even Monday, too, um, before that high kind of moves away. Um, so let's go take a look at the HRRR, and we'll take a look at this storm and look at the rain that's going to be coming our way. So here we go. Rain is going to be moving in. Light rain, very light rain in the morning. Uh, that'll be very light. Um, the heavier stuff moves in later on. So here's a couple of showers that moves through move through in the evening. Uh, so it could be some heavier showers as you get more toward 8, 9 o'clock. They'll be scattered and then some more steadier. And it looks like uh, a good batch of heavy rain around midnight tomorrow night. You can see it almost forming a line. You can see this low here. Actually, the HRRR seems to want to make, slowing it down a little bit and having some lingering shower activity even on um, even on Friday morning around, 5th, around 10 o'clock or so. Uh, and then that should be out of here, though that, again, is fairly light. Uh, and then it slowly moves offshore. You can see it is a slow-moving front uh, when you look at all this stuff. So let's take a look and see how much rain we're going to get. This is what the HRRR thinks we're going to get. Um, so we could see, depending on wh whether you get a shower, you could see possibly between a half an inch and maybe even an inch of rain. It looks like it's showing a heavier rain over Suffolk County there. Um, but, of course, that's all depending on where the storms hit. So let's take a look and see. And, yes, there could be thunderstorms. So here we go, looking at your uh, two points in wind flow. Still in the dry air, you can see easterly flow, uh, but the moisture starts coming up before sunrise tomorrow. Winds go a little more southeasterly, and moisture uh, steadily increases in the air. And you'll see uh, it'll start getting a little more on the humid side as we get toward tomorrow night with some strong southerly winds there. Um, and there could be some uh, wind advisory needed for tomorrow because of that. And then uh, as we get toward Friday, you can see the winds have come southwesterly. Uh, but it, Friday is going to be kind of mild. There's going to be a lag between uh, the uh, dry air coming in, so you can see it won't be until the evening. So we're going to still we're going to still be dealing with warm temperatures to, on Friday, and you can see northwesterly winds there kick in for your Friday uh, e afternoon and e Friday evening more, and that's when you'll see the temperatures drop. Uh, but Friday is going to be pretty warm, I think. So we're going to have two pretty mild days in a row. Tomorrow, temp tonight, temperatures will be in the mid-30s, and then they start rising throughout the day tomorrow and through the 40s into the 50s by evening. And that's where we're going to be in the 50s, maybe even a 60-degree reading. Can't rule it out. And then it really doesn't cool off that much on Friday. We stay in the 50s uh, because of that southwesterly flow, and it won't be until later at night that we see the temperatures drop once this cold front comes through. Now, I'm going to see if there's different timing on this or there's an agreement on this. Here's the GFS, by the way, which... 
which I, I wouldn't rule out 60 degrees on Friday. I would not rule it out. So here's the GFS. See, the GFS wants to bring the drier air in a little quicker than the HRRR. HRRR is a little slower with the front. So you have a little bit of a disagreement here with the with the timing of this front. But once it gets through, dry air comes in, dew points drop, and we have dry air in place for the weekend. And hopefully that will mean some sunshine right through uh, your extended, which is Monday too as well, uh, as I believe a holiday, Martin Luther King Day. Uh, so here are the air temperatures. And again, tomorrow you see that warmth. Tomorrow night, I mean, not tomorrow night, Friday night temperatures will drop to near freezing perhaps. And then Saturday should be much colder, mid to upper 30s. Uh, and probably a lot of cloud cover, too. And then we drop below freezing into the 20s uh, overnight to Sunday morning. And then seasonable day on Sunday, highs near 40, uh, and lows at night. If we get that radiational cooling, could be teens. Uh, and then Monday, we already start seeing the temperatures inch up into the low, maybe even mid-40s. Um, so let's take a look and see uh, the cloud cover here for the weekend. And, and, you know, I'm just briefly showing this to you. This is the GFS you see. We're going to have some partly, we'll have some sunshine on Saturday, but we're going to still have some lingering cloudiness because of the storm. Again, we're going to have a little bit of instability in the air and, you know, no no precipitation, but there will be lingering cloudiness, I think. That's that's what we're going to be dealing with. But once we get towards Sunday, we'll have uh, more sunshine and you'll see those clouds move away. And then as we get toward Monday, we'll have to see. We may, may have another nice day if that cirrus can stay away for another day, but we'll see about that. Now, of course, every model has different opinions. We'll go look at the RGM now. RGM. Um, so here's the RGM for tomorrow. Plenty of clouds tomorrow. I mean, tomorrow and Friday. Uh, but uh, for Saturday, it has plenty of clouds, the RGM. And it's still, it's it, 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 it really, RGM is much slower moving this front offshore. and actually has a low forming along it, uh, spinning up a low, because this is just the bias, the RGM here, uh, along the front that would just stay right offshore. All right. I wonder if the NAM has this feature. The NAM has it, but much much weaker. But look at this. The NAM actually seems to want to back it in and have it actually possibly cloud us over on Sunday. Look at this. This is as far as the NAM goes, by the way. I'm curious what the NAM is picking up on. Let's look at the European. Uh, that's all we have of the European. That's the 12Z. It keeps it offshore, but this is a close shave now. They keep wanting to try to stall this front out again. You can see that for the weekend. Well, we're going to get into more of that, I think, as we get toward next week. Um, that's as much as the Europeans got on the 18Z. I can go to the 12Z. More or less, take, yeah, it keeps it, uh, it keeps it offshore. Um, this is the Europeans. So the NAM and the uh, RGM are sort of taken after the European model. I'm going to look at the Icon here. Icon doesn't even have it. Yeah, the Icon doesn't even have it. So I don't know. There's some kind of bias going on there. I'm not buying that that's what's going to happen. So I'm going to stick with the GFS here. There is a system, but it's way offshore. I'm going to stick with the GFS. Uh, so let's go take a look at the uh, some of the other models here when it comes to this rainfall tomorrow. I guess I'll look at the NAM. All right, tonight. So here's that rain tonight. You can see, again, scattered shower activity. Obviously, the NAM being more robust with it. Uh, and then it actually develops a line of thunderstorms uh, over us Friday morning. This is, what is this, 8 o'clock or so? So that's a line of thunderstorms right there that would form. Again, this is the NAM, but that's that's impressive right there to see that. Um, and I have a feeling it's because it's got a whole more ju juicier air. Yeah, it's got some juicier air in there. And that's probably why. Uh, I'm not, that might be, like I said, that might be a little overdone. I think it is. Uh, I think the HRR is probably going to be your best uh, look at it. FV3, we have 39 hours of the FV3 in, so we could look at the high resolution on that. This is, again, the 0Z run of the FV3. So you can see there's that first batch of showers that comes in in the evening, and then the second batch, um, and that comes in again. It seems like it's slowing it down a little bit. And having it just about done by, well, maybe 10 o'clock or so. Um, so it's slowing it down a little bit. Um, but it still, it still looks like it want, you know, wants to move offshore uh, for the weekend. It better. That's all I got to say because we have a chance for clear skies. And it's and I don't want it ruined. I'm going to be very unhappy because we haven't had one damn clear day in like so long. This god-awful pattern that we're in. All right, so let's go take a look at um, 
the what are we gonna look at here? Uh, the wind, the wind, yeah, the wind. I'm look at something else. So we gotta watch the other factor tomorrow night is the wind. This LLJ that's gonna come, and you can see, you look at these. Uh, there could be some strong winds in some of these thunderstorms here that that develop. Um, let's look at the um, Nam 12 one over here. See, it doesn't look terrible. It doesn't look terrible. Uh, but I want to use Ventus Sky as well and look at these winds. So next stop is Ventus Sky. Next and last stop is going to be Ventus Sky on this weather update. And we'll go ahead and look at the winds here and show you what's going to be happening as we head into tomorrow. 12. Uh, so the winds start picking up. Let's see. Not yet. It starts at uh, right, 10 o'clock. You're going to start seeing the winds gust. Here's 40 miles an hour. Uh, gust up to 39. That's nothing terrible. Um, 46. Uh, here's, yeah, could be close to 50. So it has it after midnight, uh, getting into some pretty strong winds. So after midnight, tomorrow night, through around 3 a.m., this is where we're going to see these strong winds. Um, they're going to be coming in. And again, it's going to be like an LLJ event. And again, if we take a look and we take a look at the winds above the surface, this is where we're going to see some of those stronger winds. So let's go to 1,000 meters here, and this is why... Yeah, this is what I mean. So this is the kind of wind you're going to have about a thousand meters above the surface. So if you have a shower, a thunderstorm, it could tap into those strong winds and bring them to the ground. If that, you know, we don't always see this, but there's a chance. There's a chance that could happen. And now Cape is not very impressive. Cape is barely any Cape here. Uh, um, if we look at uh, lifted index, that's not really all that impressive either. Uh, but they can still, I can't rule out a shower or a, th or a thunderstorm. I can't rule out a thunderstorm. Um, it's possible. It's not tremendously likely, but it's possible. So, actually, there is one more thing. See, I always remember when, as I'm going along here, Weather Prediction Center. We've got severe weather uh, likelihoods in slight in the Midwest there, you see. Uh, and then if we go to tomorrow, um, that slight has shifted now to parts of a good chunk of Alabama and Georgia are surrounded by marginal and then thunderstorm risk for the rest of us. So, uh, yeah, severe weather. We're going to have to watch out for that, too. That's going to be more tomorrow and tonight. I'm not, like I said, I'm not seeing too much on this. There are a couple of thunderstorms here or, uh, around um, Oklahoma, but other than that, nothing nothing too much uh, going on. Um, uh, if I go to the weather and hazards map, I uh, will take a look and see. It'll display all the... We do have a it looks like a gale watch in effect for the offshore waters. Like I said, I think that a wind advisory will be needed tomorrow, most likely. Uh, and uh, let's see what we got here. It looks like we've got... That might be a severe thunderstorm warning, or it was. Um, but other than that, I don't see anything too too uh, dramatic here. And I, we all know what's going on in California. I've gone on over it a lot. I'm not going to cover it in this weather update. Well, they get, I think they're getting a little bit of a break today fortunately. Um, so I think that's going to do it for this weather update. Um, and like I said, um, we got these strong winds coming in for tomorrow night. I think we'll need a wind advisory for that. Uh, and then, um, and then we'll, and then we'll have, uh, again, a mild day on Friday, breezy. And then hopefully the weekend will be dry with a sunny day on Sunday. Uh, that's going to wrap up this weather update. Have a good night.